Hello, this is Dr. Karen Rowley, family physician in St. George, Utah, and today I wanted to present some information for you for a patient perspective as well as a provider perspective regarding broad-spectrum antibiotic use in children with acute respiratory infections. So this was based off of a, uh, uh, a study, a Cochrane uh, database analysis that was done um, looking at broad-spectrum versus narrow-spectrum antibiotic um, use in, in children. Uh, this was, again, a retrospective analysis of data in the database uh, done um, by Gerber, Ross, and Brian, uh, initially published in uh, JAMA, and this was presented uh, in an a a a American Academy of Family Physicians journal uh, by David Slauson, MD, Director of Information of Sciences, University of Virginia Health System. Um, so, what, what were they looking at? Well, the question was, are broad-spectrum antibiotics the preferred treatment in children with acute respiratory infections? So during the course of the years that I've been in practice, uh, if you have a child who you believe has an acute respiratory infection, uh, you are normally taught that as antibiotic resistance increases, you need to use a broader-spectrum antibiotic to cover that or in higher doses. So uh, that's what this is specifically looking at. And these are using antibiotics that you normally may not think about as being really aggressive broad spectrum in particular. So that's why I wanted to bring this to light to make sure that hopefully you've heard this data and that this will probably change your prescribing pattern somewhat. So uh, the bottom line, the short answer is that um, broad spectrum antibiotics were normal, no more effective than narrow spectrum antibiotics for treating the acute respiratory infections in, in infants and children, and that the adverse events are significantly more common in children who are given broad spectrum antibiotics than those who are given narrow spectrum antibiotics. So let's look at the data that they presented. So again, this was a retrospective analysis of the Cochrane database um, looking at pediatric primary care practices and on outcomes of infants and children. Uh, they were specifically looking at children six months to 12 years of age who met international standards for diagnosis of acute respiratory infections, including otitis media, which is ear infections, group A streptococcus pharyngitis, or strep throat, uh, and sinusitis. People were excluded from the data if they were uh, not receiving uh, a oral antibiotic uh, so they weren't prescribed something in general, uh, if the antibiotic had already been used in the last 30 days because those would be considered more complicated acute respiratory infections and not uh, just a, dr a direct respiratory infection, or, um, or uh, if they um, were younger than uh, three years of age and being diagnosed with group A, group a streptococcus pharyngitis, mostly because it's very rare to actually see true streptococcus infections uh, pharyngitis, uh, uh, acute strep pharyngitis infections in children under the uh, age of three. So those are also excluded from the criteria. So just something as a provider, if you're recurrently diagnosing people who are under the age of three of strep throat, maybe you need to look at the literature and data behind that and reevaluate some of your prescribing patterns. So overall, they ended up with over 30,000 children in the, in the retrospective analysis. Um, of those, uh, 4,000 were prescribed broad-spectrum antibiotics. So not a huge amount of the overall patients that they looked at were given broad-spectrum antibiotics, but of those that were, uh, they could look at the, the data and see what the outcomes were. So what they saw was that there really was not that much of a more significant uh, uh, improvement. So a lower rate of treatment failure compared with narrow-spectrum. So if you were given antibiotic, and you did not respond the way that you were expected to be uh, in the uh, uh, narrow spectrum group, the, the rate of failure was 3.4% and the rate of failure in the broad spectrum group was 3.1%. So that's not really huge. So what they're basically saying there is that using the narrow spectrum antibiotics were working just as well. There's no reason not to use a narrow spectrum antibiotic um, and, and instead go on to a broad spectrum. Uh, so the other thing is that the quality of life or um, the side effects were significantly reduced in those patients that are given narrow spectrum antibiotics versus the broad spectrum. So those included adverse events such as diarrhea, secondary yeast infections like candidiasis of the, uh, the mouth or throat or in the diaper area, uh, rash or other allergic reactions or vomiting.
Um, so if you look at the risk of having a, a side effect happen, those patients that were given the broad spectrums were a 3.7% risk of having a side effect versus 2.7% of the patients who were given a narrow spectrum. So that is a 1% difference, which is a little bit more significant when you look at, you know, 30,000 children. That's 3,000 kids who are having a side effect that could have been present, prevented compared to... Um, those kids who were given narrow spectrum. So that's just something to think about. So what were their classifications of narrow spectrum and broad spectrum antibiotics? So the narrow spectrum antibiotics were primarily penicillin and amoxicillin. The broad spectrum antibiotics were primarily uh, amoxicillin with clavulanic acid or augmentin, uh, cephalosporins such as Keflex or Omnicef, and macrolides such as azithromycin. Uh, so again, those were considered the broad spectrum. Now, I know most of us providers use those antibiotics on a regular basis, me included. And that's why I found this data was very compelling because I thought this is something that I personally need to change in my prescribing pattern. The data is there to prove that using simple penicillin and amoxicillin still works and it's less likely to cause adverse events. And so before you break out the augmentin, cephalosporins, or azithromycin, perhaps you need to rethink what you're prescribing, especially in this day and age of antibiotic resistance. So I hope this has been helpful. I hope you as a patient, this data is helpful because it will make you a better consumer next time you do need an antibiotic and discussing the antibiotic choice with your provider. And until next time, this is Dr. Radley, family physician in St. George, Utah, Pura Vida.